Network. Assistant U.S. Attorney, a Fox Business contributor, and a good friend, Andy McCarthy. Andy, great to see you. The perfect guy for this story. Thank Not you. too many Supreme Court decisions affect 100 million private sector workers. This is, this is really a standout decision. Yeah, they both are, David, and, and I think this goes exactly to your point about the vast consequence of this. What this case is really about, as far as the, the court was concerned in, in respect of both mandates, is did Congress give clear authority to whether it was HHS or OSHA to issue these mandates? It's really to the executive branch under Biden. Uh, and I think there's a very good argument that the, the Congress did not give that authority. Uh, it certainly wasn't clear that it was uh, giving a vaccine authorization uh, in either case, uh, which is why the, uh, the HHS case where it was upheld is such a thin case, whereas the other one, uh, the OSHA case, went six to three. Now, business, let's talk about the actual effect of all this. Businesses have spent a lot of money setting up for this mandate. They, this was the week that it was supposed to go into effect, so they've, they've spent that money already. Are they safe in assuming now that, that those who want to can disassemble what they put together to support the mandate? Yeah, I think for the moment they are, David. I, I, I think, you know, one of the things that came out in the argument last week was the only thing that was supposed to go into effect on this past Monday, January 10th, was the mask aspect of the OSHA mandate. So in other words, the vaccine part of it did not go into effect until February 9th. Gotcha. And I think it's to the court's credit that it gave the businesses as much time as they could give it to, or give them to, uh, you know, make their plans accordingly. Now, there are a lot of states, of course, the states were the ones that took the feds to, to court, so they were the big winners in this, but there are a lot of states, blue states, that have their own mandates, and blue cities, like New York, for example, that have their own vaccine mandates. Does this affect those mandates on the local level? No, it doesn't. This was strictly, David, about whether the federal government has been given power by Congress, whether under the... Uh, Commerce Clause in the OSHA case or the Spending Clause for the General Welfare in the HHS case. But it's strictly federal, and the court, so far at least, hasn't questioned whether states have police power to issue, which they traditionally they have pretty broad police power to issue health Well, traditionally they, they do, but on the other hand, there are a lot of businesses in, in this city and in other cities around the country that are against these vaccine mandates, the local ma mandates. Might they use this Supreme Court decision to push their case in court? They can try. I think that the, the case is pretty easy to distinguish. And the whole idea here, David, is that the states have that power because they're closest to the people whose lives are affected. And in theory, if a state government enacts things that the public doesn't want, the public can throw the people out of office. Now, you know, a lot of these blue states are one-party states, and, you know, they haven't been very responsive to the way businesses no. and uh, rank-and-file people yeah. <laughs> feel about some of the things that they direct. To say the very least. Uh, th this decision will reverberate, though, in other cases that involve executive decisions. And a lot of people are wondering whether this administration was going to use this mandate as kind of a template for other executive decisions. For example, they could say, OK, climate change is something that affects our health. Therefore, we can use our, our power, our executive power to have mandates that would affect climate change. Does this kind of put a stop to that? I don't think so. And I, here's where I'm disappointed in the, in the cases, especially, David, and where I think a lot of people will be. We'd love to hear the court say, at least on the conservative side, that the Congress has limited enumerated powers and that if it, what it wants to do is not within those powers, and it can't do it. By the way, that's, what the, the the that's not just an opinion. That's what the Constitution actually says, right? Yes, that's right. But but unfortunately, it seems to me that what the justices are saying is if Congress wants to do this, it needs to be clear, not that Congress can't do it. So what they're essentially saying is we've so expanded the, the spending clause and we've so expanded the commerce clause that what we're requiring here, really, if Congress wants to preempt the states, is they just need to be clear. 
And I don't think that's very satisfying to people who think there are some things the federal government shouldn't be able to do. On the other hand, it is very satisfying for a lot of businesses that didn't want to adhere to the federal mandate that now have the option to pull out of it. I mean, uh, granted, uh, some of them have already spent a lot of money trying to set up for it. But those who those who haven't, those who are gambling that, in fact, the Supreme Court would vote or decide as they did, uh, they're they're pretty happy today. I, I'm just wondering what what you think it says about the legal eagles inside the White House right now. Well, you know, look, prog progressives are always trying to push the envelope through court action and administrative action that they think they can get away with. But I think the main point is the one that you're hitting on, which is if the court is saying that Congress just needs to be clear here. Congress would enact a statute that authorizes all these things if it were popular with the public and with businesses. The fact that they haven't been clear and haven't issued authorization for Biden to do the things he wants to do is because they're not popular. You know, there's another thing that was revealed uh, by all this, and that was uh, how, uh, I don't know, how dangerous, I guess it's fair to say, some of the Supreme Court justices are in, in being loose, too loose with the facts and the figures that they bring into cases. Uh, Justice Sotomayor, of course, famously said something that was really dead wrong by a huge margin. Let me just play that soundbite and get your reaction. Roll tape. Omicron um, is as deadly uh, and causes as much serious disease in the unvaccinated as Delta did. We have over 100,000 children, which we've never had before, in, t in serious condition, and uh, many on ventilators. Now, that figure was off by a factor of 30. I mean, it's a huge, huge miss uh, by her. I, it made me wonder how many other cases were decided, at least on her part, by information that was that was that incorrect, that was that factually wrong. Yeah, well, here's what I'd say about that, David. I wouldn't put too much stock into the kind of um, bombast that we sometimes hear at oral argument. I don't pretend to have had enough time to like line by line go closely scrutinize these decisions. But from what I've been able to read, the the differences here are real legal differences about what did Congress intend and what did Congress authorize. I don't see the kind of wild and crazy statements that you sometimes hear in, in oral argument and that we heard last week in the formal decisions themselves. I think um, that's the main thing. I mean, when they finally do the ruling is what they've written, knowing that they're going to circulate it among the judges and some are going to dissent. Does it stress factual yeah. accuracy? And I think but it did. It did, does. Andy. You're 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 being you're putting the best face on it. It did give you a window into some of the 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 wrong facts and figures that she was grabbing at. I mean, you don't grab at figures that are off by a factor of thirty. I mean, I understand that these things get cleaned up in the wash when the final thing goes to a written decision. Uh, but gee whiz, I mean, it, it, that that kind of shows you. Just from from, you know, th when she's thinking on her feet, she's using figures that that aren't aren't at all true. Yeah, it's a window into where they're coming from, David. And and look, you know, the report about the case that right before I came on pointed out that the uh, that the progressives, the three who uh, dissented in one of the cases said, you know, th the court is saying that the agency that's responsible for worker safety can't do this. And where they're coming from is like. If you say they're responsible for worker safety, they can do whatever they want yeah. under the rubric of worker safety, which isn't much crazier than, you know, quoting facts and figures that are just flat wrong. Andy McCarthy, good to see you, Andy. Thank you so much for coming in for this. I appreciate it.